Hey, welcome to the first video in this software architecture and system design series. This is going to give you everything you need to know to start developing software systems. We'll learn how we can design the back end of websites and applications and give you an understanding of how everything works together. This will be mostly concepts and understanding how things work. If you want more hands-on stuff, I have tons of applied programming videos on my channel. But if you're brand new to this channel, I'm Caleb and I welcome you here. Before we get started, I wanted to share two resources with you. The first is a backend software engineering mind map. This is going to share with you every technology you should know if you want to become a backend software engineer. The second thing is if you need help applying the principles that we teach here, as well as the things on the mind map, then I have a mentorship program. This is where you can get one-on-one -on -one help to learn the skills to become a software engineer and get a high paying software engineering role. So if that's something you'd be interested in, I'll have a link for that as well as the mind map down below. So that is all of the essential intro stuff. Let's get to it. We're basically going to talk about building an application. Now we might say application, we might say app. When people say app, sometimes they think mobile apps, but it doesn't have to be a mobile app. Basically some form of software. And we'll just start by drawing this as a square. So this is our software here. This is what people might see the software as when they use it. So this is you over here. and you're interacting with the computer using the software. You're happy, you don't really understand all the details and the boring stuff behind the scenes, but that's what we're going to get into as engineers. So what behind the scenes is going on with this application? Well, there's a million different application types, so let's start with the example of a website. So what we'll do is we'll basically zoom in on the software and see how somebody would create it. So how they would design the system. Now, when I say design, I don't mean design like web design here where you make the application cute. The design here is talking about designing the different systems such as databases and APIs and how they all work together. So that square we just had could be a single application, but in that code, it could be split up into different sections for organization's sake. So as a developer, you have an idea of how to start structuring things and where to put what code. There are a lot of different design patterns which will give you the framework of how to organize your code. So that's the first word you should know, design pattern. So design patterns refer to how you organize the code. So you may design your application to follow a certain design pattern where the code is split up into different sections, but it's all still a single application. So I'll give you an example of a design pattern that you're very likely to run into if you get into web development, and that is MVC. So this stands for Model View Controller. We'll get into what that means here in a moment, but this is an example design pattern that helps you organize your code. It splits the code up into logical sections, so you don't just have one giant file with never-ending amount of functionality in that single file. Next, you should be familiar with software architecture. Architecture is different than design patterns as it focuses on something different. Where design patterns focuses on the organization of code within a project, architecture focuses on how different systems interact together to build a larger system. So this is all about organizing a larger system. So for architecture, you might be asking yourself, where are we going to store the data? Are we going to use a particular type of database? Is that going to be in the cloud or local? Are we going to have any caching layers? What's that going to look like? And we're going to get into all of that. So if you don't understand what all that means, it's totally fine because we're starting from the complete basics. We're going to get into more advanced topics. So if you already understand a lot of this, be patient as we work through the essentials. But within architecture, there are also different patterns. So one of them that you might run into would be a three tier architecture. And this is pretty similar to MVC. And we're going to talk about that and how they're different. But Long story short, this deals with the code organization. This deals with larger system organization. Then there is also system design. So system design is pretty similar. You can think of system design as a process of solving a specific problem. So for example, you're given the problem, we need to send millions of notifications to all of our users. We have some massive messaging app how are we going to do that? That would be a system design challenge where you take some problem and you build the end to end solution, ultimately ending up with an architecture, which will describe the actual databases, the different backend services, the front ends, all of those pieces and how they fit together. 
and you could potentially get into design patterns, but most likely that's going to be a little too granular. So we're really going to focus mainly on this area, building larger systems. So we'll talk about common problems, walk through how we might solve those, and talk about the common architecture you might end up with. So as we go through this, we'll go through some examples like scaling an app from just one user up to millions of users. And we'll talk about potential architectures you could use to make that possible. So let's continue with these examples I've given you going a little bit deeper. So we talked about MVC and we talked about the three tier architecture. What do those mean and what does that look like? So let's start by talking about how we might design our code with the MVC pattern. Then we'll build upon this and talk about the three tier architecture and some other things like microservices and stuff like scaling. We'll get into all of those things, but let's start with the basics here on how you might design an application. So we have a user down here who's making a request to our website. And earlier, I just drew it as a box. That's what the user thinks of it as, it's just a website. They don't think about all of the pieces behind the scenes. And that's good, we don't want them to have to think about that stuff, we abstract it away. But in that box, there's a lot of different components that could be working together. And these are all probably going to be within the same code repo. So a single project, at least starting out with this example, but as we advance upon this idea, that might change. But let's start with the basic example where we just have a single application. Within that application, we might have different files and one of those might be a router. And the router's job is to take a request path and associate that with some function. So over here, I'll write what the steps of this might be. The user makes a request. Let's say they're trying to get users. So technically that might look like this, get slash users. They want a list of all the user names, for example. The router is going to send that to a function and the functions are going to be inside of a controller. So each endpoint could have a function and that means once the get users hits the router, that will be mapped to something such as get users. The controller is kind of like the coordinator and it's going to need to retrieve the user information using a model. So this might look like user dot get all. So it's just invoking another function, but user here is the model. And in our structure here, it might look like the router hits the controller. The controller then hits a model. The model works with the database to get the data. So that's usually done for us by an ORM or we might write the SQL to do that. Don't worry about that right now. Basically, the model's job is to get the data from the database. This is going to be returned from the database and ultimately given back to the controller as a list of objects in code. So we'll give back to the controller a list of users. So we go to the model, the model gives it back to the controller. The controller then gives that data to a view, which has the responsibility of presenting that data. The view is going to take the users put them in HTML and CSS, which is ultimately going to be what's displayed. So view generates the HTML and CSS with that data embedded in it. So the web page will have all of the user information. So that's what the view does. And then it gives that generated HTML and CSS back to the controller which ultimately gives a response back to the user, which I'm going to write it as client here, so the computer that's making a request. So this is the general process, pretty complex when you write it out like this, but overall it's not too bad. We can visualize it this way. The user makes a request to this larger application, which they just see as a giant box, right? They don't worry about the details. They make a request, it hits a router. The router goes to the controller. Controller goes to the model. Model returns back objects. The controller gives that to the view. The view returns back HTML and CSS, which is sent back as a response to the user. So the user ultimately gets HTML and CSS, which is for the web page and this will contain user information in it. 
Now, for those of you who might be thinking ahead, instead of returning HTML and CSS, you could return just JSON data for an API. So then instead of generating HTML and CSS, you would just put that as a JSON response. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. The first way of thinking about this is just a user making a request to a web page that has visuals. Here are the key takeaways with this current structure. It's going to be a single repo and it will be deployed on a single server. So one computer's job is to handle the database service and all of the application functionality and the requests and the responses. So not only is it a web server, but it's also a database server and that database is just being used on that computer. So this is one way of doing it. A single repo, one project and a single server, one destination, for the user to make a request to. This is the simplest structure, and if you were to put a name to this, it would be called a monolith. So a monolith basically just means everything in one giant application. The alternative to this would be to split it out into different components, and this would be architectural components, so not logical components in the code. These logical components are really just files or different classes but all of it's still within a single project. The next logical way of building upon this to scale to bigger applications would be to split out some of these sections into their own service. The most obvious one to split out, I believe would be the backend and the view. And then this application that we once had would now just be responsible for routing and the actual coordination with the controller. But as you continue to grow and continue to add new features, and have to support more users, you might start breaking things out into even more dedicated services. And this approach is called a microservice approach. So comparing a monolith to a microservice approach, it's simple because it's all just one giant thing. So you don't have to worry about communication between different components, but that's also a downside. You now have this bloated application that does everything and you can't individually scale different components such as the database layer or the controller layer or the view layer. With microservices, you can individually scale the different services, but now you have more connection points and you have to worry about communicating between those services. So instead of thinking of this as black and white, either you have a monolith or a maxed out microservice architecture, think of it as a spectrum. Most likely you're going to land somewhere between a monolithic service and a bunch of microservices. You don't want to go too complex with the microservices because that's going to be over engineering. And now the complexities of keeping everything communicating and working is worse than if you just had less microservices and everything was together. But if you keep it too monolithic and now you just have like one service, it's very challenging to independently scale these things and actually build something scalable, both in terms of user count, but also in terms of maintenance, not just having one giant thing that's like a monstrosity that you can't keep up to date and organized. So we don't want that either. So you should probably find a balance there and we'll talk about all of that in the series as well. So don't feel like you have to know exactly what to do. Right now, all we are worrying about is we have this single application. This is on a single server or you can just think of it as a computer. So when the user makes a request, they just hit one server. That server is just doing a couple of different things. It's managing all of this. So you can imagine squeezing that into this server here. Cool, so now you probably have a decent understanding of the MVC software design pattern. It's how to organize your code into different sections. But notice how implementing that design pattern didn't require us to have a certain architecture. We could do that on just a single application. However, it can benefit us to start adding different architecture approaches to make the design of our application, not just in our code, but our actual system, more appropriate for a complex app. Once you start introducing databases, routing, and views, it probably makes sense to split that out into a couple of different pieces. So let's now take a look at the three tier architecture. So we started with MVC because it's a really simple software pattern that translates very nicely to the three tier architecture, which is a great way to get started with software system architecture. So we can basically think about breaking off the three major components into their own thing the model, the view, and the controller. Now it's not going to be one-to-one -one quite like that, but it'll be pretty close. We'll first take a look at the model. 
And the very first thing you would do is split out the database service to a separate server. So this is our database. And the only change we have to make in our code is just change the connection string to now connect to a separate computer. So the model is now going to talk to this database instead of a database on the same computer. Then we have the controller. It's going to interact with the model the same way because it's still in the same application. So these are going to be on their own server. Now the view we can split out into its own thing. And this is basically just going to be our web front end. So this is only going to be responsible for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And that can be on its own server as well. So this would be an example of a three tier architecture. The flow of a request is now going to look like this. We're still going to have a router that's going to be shared in this main server. So now let's talk about a request flow. So when a user is down here and they make a request from their computer or mobile device, instead of hitting this server first, they're actually going to make a request to the front end. The front end is then going to request data from the back end. Pretty much the same idea, it's just now they go through the front end first. Once it hits the back end, the router will associate it to some function in the controller. The controller will get the data from the model, which will make a request to the database server. The model will give back the objects to the controller and give it back to the view. The view will then display that inside of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, which is what gets sent back to the user. So let's go over that flow real quick one more time. Request to the front end to the back end, through the router, to the controller, to the model, to the database. The model will give it back to the controller as objects, and then the controller gives the response data to the view, which formats it in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and gives it to the user. So to summarize this, we probably have two applications. We have the front end, and we have the back end. This is going to be across three services. We don't actually have to have a dedicated application for the database layer, so that's why it's two and three. We'll have the front end, which is this here. We'll have the back end, which is all this here. And then we'll have the database, which is another service, but not a dedicated application that we have to write. So the services are going to be the front end. I'm just gonna write FE the back end, and the database. The only change in our code that we would make is we would split out the front end to its own application using a front end library most likely to make requests to the back end. And then the other major change is we would change out the connection string for the model to connect to the database since the database is now in a different location. So ultimately, we're going to end up with three services. And just to make this concrete, I want to give an example of different technologies that would apply for each one of these. The ones you use might change, or if you're watching this in 10 years, the libraries might change. That's fine. I'll just give you an example. The front end, you could use just JavaScript, or you could use a JavaScript library. So I'll say React. The back end, you'll use a programming language and then probably some web development framework. So for example, you might use Django, which uses Python. React uses JavaScript, so two different languages here, but basically some framework for the front end, some framework for the back end. For the database, you might use Postgres, which is a relational database, allowing you to store your information in tables. So these are technologies you would use for the different services but where would you actually host these? The example I'm going to use is all going to use Amazon Web Services. So within AWS, you could host your front end in S3. Your back end, you could host with EC2. And then your database, you can host with RDS. So AWS, Amazon Web Services, provides services for you to host all of this stuff so you don't have to worry about hosting it on your own computer and dealing with all the networking and all that stuff. So you can just pay them probably a ton of money to do all of that for you. You'll also get pretty good reliability, uptime, and scalability and all of that stuff as well. 
So it might be worth starting to learn a cloud provider such as AWS. Now, the main benefit of separating out, out into three different services instead of running it all off of a single server is the scalability individually for each of these different components here. So if for some reason you need more compute power just on the back end, you could actually expand this into three servers. It doesn't have to be three, I'm just using three as an example. However, anytime you do any changes like that, it introduces new complexities you have to learn about. So if you have three servers, which server does the front end know which to connect to? This is an example of one of those challenges. The answer, which we'll get into in another video in more detail, is you might do something like load balancing. You could also scale the database independently as well, but that'll introduce its own complexities and we'll get into that another time. So this is just an overview of some of the benefits of splitting things out into their own sections, but it introduces new challenges. Most likely at minimum, this is the architecture you're going to use. A single server for everything is pretty uncommon when you start getting into any meaningful real applications. So I would definitely just start with the three tier architecture. It might be worth learning just the basics of view engines for any of the backend languages, but most likely for real apps, you're going to just right away split it out into its own thing and have a dedicated front end application and then use a JavaScript library such as React. But just to get into that a little bit more, every backend language has some templating engine. So for example, you might hear of Razor Pages or Pug Pages or whatever, basically a way to take data and put it in HTML and CSS. And it's basically the way of generating the front end pages using backend technology. That's the way you would have done it in the previous example with a just massive monolithic application. But pretty quickly, I would shift from that, just learning the bare basics of just creating one view and knowing how that works, to then always just starting with a front-end library. So that's probably where I'm going to call it quits for this one. Hopefully, everything we covered was a good introduction. The next logical thing would be to talk about how you scale an app starting from just one user to millions of users and what those complexities are, such as growing to multiple servers, introducing load balancing, caching, all of the different technologies you can add to make your applications support more users and be more reliable. Thank you so much for watching the first video. As a reminder, I have those two resources. So if you want the backend engineering mind map with all the technologies you should be familiar with, I'll have a link for that. And I'll have a link to the mentorship program if you want some help landing a software engineering role or upgrading your career if you're already in tech. Or maybe you're doing something else with your life and you've always wanted to transition into tech. First off, doing a great start just watching this video, but if you want a little bit more help, check out that mentorship program. Thank you for watching the first one and stay tuned for the next one. We'll probably start talking about scaling applications or whatever else I feel like talking about in that video. So I guess we'll see. See you next time.